fuel to the fire now, the White House is stepping up its efforts to hinder the impeachment inquiry into President Donald Trump. The administration is barring a key witness from testifying today. U.S. Ambassador to the EU, Gordon Sondland. He had agreed to appear voluntarily, but his lawyer says Sondland had no choice but to stand down, saying that he was, quote, profoundly disappointed. He's a central figure in the president's bid to persuade Ukraine to investigate his political opponents. He was cited several times in text messages between top diplomats discussing the president's request and the withholding of foreign and military aid to Ukraine, including this one. The top U.S. diplomat in Ukraine, Bill Taylor, asked, are we now saying that security assistance and White House meeting conditioned on investigations? Sunderland's response, call me. President Trump says he did not want Sunderland to appear before what he calls a totally compromised kangaroo court. But House Intelligence Committee Chairman Adam Schiff says this will only intensify Congress's resolve. The failure to produce this witness the failure to produce these documents, um, we consider yet additional strong evidence of obstruction of the constitutional functions of Congress, a co-equal branch of government. So what is the president's strategy here? Let us get the insights of a man who knows Donald Trump well. Chris Ruddy is CEO of Newsmax Media and a frequent sounding board for Donald Trump and a frequent guest on this program as we try to pass what he's saying and what he's doing. I'm not going to say what's in his mind, because last time you said only the president knows what's in his mind. So, Chris Ruddy, what is the president thinking? What has he been saying to him? You've been talking to him in, in the last recent days. We've talked a couple of times by phone since Pelosi announced, Nancy Pelosi announced the impeachment inquiry. Um, I think the president agrees with my assessment. We both agree. We see this as a political act, not a legal act. 13 months to an election, there are some serious allegations raised. Bring them out through the oversight process of Congress. Instead, they immediately, without speaking to the whistleblower, without seeing the whistleblower complaint, without interviewing anybody, uh, they immediately call for an impeachment inquiry. So it made it seem that they were more interested in the act of the impeachment rather than finding the truth. And um, I think the president, frankly, is overreacting, and the White House is overreacting by withholding testimony. The truth is going to... Do you think um, Sunderland should have been allowed to testify today? I do. Was that a mistake? I do. I think that the administration, you know, this... I understand where the president and the White House is coming from, because remember, as much as people say obstruction with Mueller, this president waived executive privilege. There were 500 witnesses, $550 million spent, two years of investigation. They found no evidence of Russian collusion. Shocking, isn't it? No evidence. Well... And they we can get into the passing of all that. And at the end of the day, they accused him of obstruction. So I think he looks at this and says, why do I benefit playing the nice guy here? I believe that Congress, I'm a journalist, I believe Congress has a serious oversight role and that the president and the White House should respect that oversight role. So basically you're saying, as his friend, as somebody who's spoken to him, you think they should not have obstructed Gordon Sondland from going to Congress? Well, I wouldn't use the word obstructed. Um, Adam that's Schiff obviously, did. yeah, I think Adam Schiff is. But you think he should have allowed him to go testify? Yes, I do. Okay. I think, unless there's some really pressing reason for privilege, <laughs> the president has denied that there was ever any quid pro quo. Yeah. Now, you said, and I need to just make sure that we're all on the same page, that Nancy Pelosi made her move without any knowledge of what the whistleblower was doing. That's not quite the timeline the the transcript had been released no 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 she announced it before the transcript well, the they day had, before they had seen the transcript no, they had access no. to it what we do know is that the whistleblower did speak to adam shift a week or two before the complaint was first surfaced so they had knowledge of what was was in the complaint and that could come out as in if there were fair hearings and maybe in the senate trial if there's an impeachment what do you think? I mean, you say that with a little bit of a twinkle in your eye. Do you think this... I mean, is this a threat to the president? I believe it's a mortal threat to his presidency. He certainly should treat it that way. Because it's not this issue about the Ukraine. You know, I think, you know, in basketball they have the term head fake. And I think what we're seeing from the Democrats in Congress is a head fake. They're saying this is only about the Ukraine. We're only going to do this in 90 days. Why then do you open up six different congressional committees 
involved in the impeachment inquiry. But I'm more I interested in, in, in what you say, that you're a friend of his, you've spoken to him recently after this impeachment inquiry yeah. was announced. Um, you're saying it's a mortal threat to his presidency. Yeah. Not many Republicans are saying that on the record. People are getting worried, there's no doubt about it. Well, if what you look at the polling data, the polling data is moving in favor of the inquiry. There's more than a majority, yes. and there wasn't okay. back 58 two weeks, percent, say. Two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. So that's changed. The number of people saying the president should be impeached is increasing. Um, not significantly, but it's moving in a bad direction for the president. So I do think it should be treated very seriously. But to me, again, it's not the Ukraine. I don't think that the president committed a crime related to the Ukraine. To, to the, to the Ukraine or to his conversation with Zelensky. The issue is when you have six, six congressional committees, we all know that when Watergate started, nobody had even heard of the Watergate tapes. Um, Chris Reddy, you were a journalist at one point, and, you, and you still are. Like but you actually show. covered yeah. um, a previous uh, yeah. investigation into a previous president. Yeah, And you would have been the first to shout and scream bloody murder if President Clinton had you know, done what, what President Trump is doing or what the White House has done and, and you know, try to deflect any of this. So, I mean, this has to follow its, its path, as I, I think, think you say right yeah. now. I, wasn't I guess an, I, Sorry, go ahead. I wasn't an advocate of the uh, impeachment against President Clinton, but I certainly, I was part of the media that was very critical of him that led to his impeachment. Yeah. And I look back and I think that those of us that were critics made a very big mistake and it backfired. Bill Clinton ended up very popular. And I've said publicly that I think that we look back and that the president had done, Bill Clinton had done a good job as president. I think a lot of Democrats are going to look back and say that Donald Trump was not as bad as they thought at the time. I, I mean, he's reconfiguring yeah. the China relationship. These trade deals, these are, these are deals that Democratic unions support. The border security, that was a Democratic issue 20 years ago. So NATO spending, that's a Democratic issue. So, you know, he's, there, there's... People just sort of have a knee-jerk reflex against the president because it's Donald Trump. Well, so let's just, I mean, okay, you would say that. Um, he would say that. He's called it a witch hunt. Um, and, and we understand where that comes from, given that he says that. Mm -hmm. But other Republicans, let's just say Mitt Romney, for instance, who is an elder in the Republican Party. He's been a governor. He's now a senator. He's run for president. Um, he was very scathing of the Ukraine issue. <clears throat> Um, and the China issue, the, the, the quid pro quos that they identify that the president implicitly made. And he said the notion that President Trump's defense is that he's trying to clean up corruption in Ukraine it just falls apart when it's clear that he's only asking for one name to be investigated, that is Joe Biden and his son, who happens to be his political domestic opponent. I don't think investigating Joe Biden is smart or politically right. I think it definitely was out of bounds. It's not a crime. He's the chief law enforcement officer of the nation. If he wants to request an investigation, the idea that Joe Biden, there's no evidence Joe Biden committed any crime or his son, so I don't think he should be investigated. On the other hand, this was a president where there was no evidence that he ever colluded with Russia, but yet this, Robert this is Mueller. Slightly different. Well, of course it's different because it's Donald Trump. Well, no, because it's it, the, President it's very, Trump initiating this call, as we've seen thought, thought in the transcript. Committed, people thought Donald Trump had, a, had committed a crime, and they uh, launched a two-year congressional investigation against him, and it turned out there was no crime. What is your view but, on his judgment? I mean, because this is basically, apart from anything else, is what it's boiling down to. And as I say... It is not just the usual suspects who are yelling and screaming. It is now increasing members of his own party, particularly in the wake of what seems to have been a unilateral presidential decision to pull American troops out of Syria. And we have had everybody from Mitch McConnell, who said that it would only empower Iran, uh, Russia and Assad, to uh, Nikki Haley, who says that it would leave American allies to die on the battlefield, um, on and on. People who are in his camp politically, including so-called presidential friend Lindsey Graham, the senator. Right. Let's just play what he said. I expect the American president right. to do what's in our national security interest. Mm -hmm. It's never in our national security interest to abandon an ally who's helped us fight ISIS. It's never in our national security interest to create the conditions for the reemergence of ISIS. Uh, yes, and now, so it's kind of unifying the Republicans against this foreign policy move. 
Where was it ever written that Republicans or even conservatives like myself should support the president in everything he ever does? I'm still a friend of the president. I disagree with him on a whole host of things. As you know, we've talked about some of those issues through the years. And I think that pushback is actually good for him to hear the other side. It's not bad. I think there's been a mistake made by a lot of him. We saw this during the Obama years where the Democrats didn't push back against Obama on certain things. So I think it's, it's healthy, it's good, and I think this president does react and he does listen. Just so. a quick question. Well, maybe, you know, you, you might be right, because the first time he did this, his, his, his elder statesman, General James Mattis, resigned over it. Brett McGurk also did, who was the administration's carryover appointed special representative on Syria. And he has actually but just questioned... But the context questioned... of this, Christian, is that we have spent trillions of dollars in Afghanistan yes, and yes. Iraq. Uh, all of that... And this is a president that campaigned about removing Americans for these quagmire wars that we're involved with. Again, it sounds like a democratic issue, doesn't it? No, no, no. This and is, this he's, is, he's trying this to pull back... This is more about pulling the rug from under American allies I who agree fought with you. and died I agree with you. against we ISIS. We should support the Kurds, and the Turks have been a bad actor. They're a rogue actor. So do you think that kind of realization, after he did this latest unilateral tweet to pull out the U.S. troops, led him to then have the Pentagon say that they're going to deny Turkey the airspace over that area so that Turkey could not follow up an invasion well, with any air attack. I'm not and also, to the internal, all right, but, but it also, looks like that's the case. Okay, President Trump has tweeted, as I've stated strongly before, and just to reiterate, if Turkey does anything that I, in my great and unmatched wisdom, considered to be off limits, I will totally destroy and obliterate the economy of Turkey. I've done it before. <laughs> I think he's having a little fun there. Yeah, which bit are you laughing yes. at? The unmatched wisdom well, or the obliterate? He, he likes to have a little fun. I think he's having a... That's his sense of humor. 